Welcome to the Top 4 Show. Tonight, we're going to go through and we're going to examine the resumes of all of the final four participants of the Superb Owl number three. Now, let's go ahead and see how these final four contestants got to the biggest stage to play in front of a large studio audience that is totally, totally hashtag not rigged. Hashtag not rigged. Starting from the top of the bracket, going to the bottom, we start with none other than Fake Muse, the number one seed in the tournament. And you might think, oh, it's all rigged. It's all easy. It's been a simple path to get here, but you would be incorrect. In round number one, Fake Muse dropped the game to the 256th seed in the tournament. The lowest seed in the entire tournament was facing elimination. Batman had the opportunity to come up with the biggest upset in God's Unchained history. However, Fake Muse survived. So the haters, the haters were saying, hey, this is the most overrated one seed of all time. They're like, I don't understand how he's the number one seed. Charmander's even bullying, bullying me. It's not feeling particularly great. But quietly, while nobody was looking, we pull off a sweep, another sweep, and another sweep, three sweeps in a row, and now we're in the top 16. But the top 16 posed a big threat. It came up and the bracket said, next up, Mighty Uncle, the free-to-play Reddit People's Champion, taking on the old, decrepit, f former free-to-play People's Champion myself back in 2020. Though, neither one of us are free to play anymore. So it makes no sense. But that was the hype of the match. It was the best of five. But they use only the end four to this match. Mighty Uncle 3-1. to one. Then became... A very important match for revenge for fake views. He takes on Jay Khan, Johnny Krypton, Jimmy Neutron. We don't know his name! But we know what happened last time. Last time out in the Player of the Year Finals! Quarterfinal matchup. Johnny Krypton goes first four out of five games to dispatch Fake Muse in five. However, this time around, Fake Muse decides that he's going to be going first in games one and two and ends Johnny Krypton's superb owl journey in four. That is how Fake Muse reached the final four. Is this a tournament of destiny for Fake Muse? Does he win his own tournament for the second time in three years? Will Fake Muse be champion of his own tournament again? Taking on Fake Muse in the first semifinal matchup is going to be none other than M7SN from the Perion clan. Perion versus Infinite Mana, the matchup that everyone has been wanting. But how did M7SN get here? Well, in round number one, a lot like Fake Muse, it was a bit shaky. Taking on the 245 seed, everyone thinks it's going to be a walk in the park. But this one goes to three games. M7SN squeaks by in round number one. So that was a bit sweaty. And in round number two, a controversial lawyer situation where M7SN, his law team, able to beat his opponent despite being unable to schedule their match. M7SN won by disqualification. On to round number three, he faces LaBuzz. And under the swarm of the bees that were buzzing around him, he was able to escape in three. Then it came down to the money bubble. And it's like, okay, this is a tough matchup. It's Perion versus Perion. Everyone's claiming the bracket is rigged, but I didn't figure this out beforehand. I didn't schedule the bracket. Wait, I did make the bracket. But anyways, it's M7SN versus Lord Crew. And M7SN tells Lord Crew, I'm the captain now. Sweeps him, no doubt at all. So he's in the money, champion of his group. However, next up, he's taking on Tournament Cinderella, number 220 seed, Plakaju. Plakaju's been submitting the content, he's been writing dual screens, he's been zoned in to this tournament. And this one would be a fight, a sweat. It goes down to game number five. However, M7SN able to sneak a win to get by. Next up, he faces in the in the quarterfinals somebody named 
non-smoking. 180th seed, another tournament Cinderella flown under the radar. Even under below, under Muse's radar. I don't know who this person is. However, M7SN knew who that person was. His name was non-smoking. He got smoked. Three game sweep in the quarterfinals sends M7SN to the finals. Does he have what it takes to take down this tournament? Is this going to be a Chicago Black Sox scandal where M7SN is able to bribe himself to a championship? Stay tuned to find out. Next up, we've got Squid. And if you've played in any Gods Unchained tournaments before, you've seen him. In every single event. Literally every single event. The Squid knocked out Team Octopus for Ocean Supremacy. That's why you don't see them anymore. And through the early stage of this tournament, the tournament's number seven seed breezed through. In his first four rounds, he only lost one game, winning his group with ease, but when it came down to the round of 16, it got a little bit iffy. Even though the bandwagoners, the crowd, was really excited, they had chants like, who lives next to a pineapple under the sea? Squid, 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 squid. However, Shushu comes around in the round of 16. Shushu doesn't care. Flat out doesn't care. Like, I'm going to take game one, I'm going to take game two. And Squid, suddenly, on the brink of elimination, needs to find a way to reverse sweep. And then wins three games against Agro War in a row to stay alive in the tournament. A bit of a scare for Squid. However, next up comes none other than tournament number two seed, Player of the Year Caution Fund. And this is one of the highlight matchups of the entire tournament because round number one of the Player of the Year Tournament featured Caution Fund taking out Squid. And then Caution Fund wins Player of the Year, part of how he got the number two seed in this tournament. Squid out for revenge for his round one defeat in the Player of the Year Tournament says, I'm not gonna make this one exciting. I don't, want, I don't care about the fans who want this to be a five-game match. I'm going to end this very quickly. He sweeps the player of the year to secure his spot in the final four. Is this angry squid going to be able to close out his superb out journey and win a major tournament in 2023? Or is it going to end kind of sad? All right, right now, I'm going to be honest. I can hear the cries from Reddit. Oh, this is a free-to-play tournament, but the Final Four is all whales. This is unfair. It's clearly rigged. The whales just win everything. This isn't right. Well, if you are looking for a free-to-play people's champion hero, the true hero comes in the form of the 219th seed. Normally hanging out and lurking in the ethereal diamond meta, there's no Blade of the White playing, no Demogorgons in his deck history. But he made it here to the Final Four, and his journey here was absolutely extraordinary. And round number one, as the 219th seed, he's a big underdog against Jumpstart, but he's the one that gets the jump start in this tournament, winning rounds one and two very easily. 2-0 sweeps both times, stunning his uh, opponents who were the favored seed. However, in round number three, this comes down to be a critical moment for Franjek. He gets swept. I know now you're confused. You're like, how is he in the final four? He gets swept. He lost 2-0. However, in one of his opponent's decks, there was a reflection elementalist, which gives Franjek a second life. The reflection elementalist, elementalist disqualifies his opponent, the 155th seed. You're like, big deal, so what? The 219th seed, advancing by disqualification over the 155th seed that 2 owed him, is not going to be a big deal. I see next on his schedule, he's got Sam Bam. He's going to get crushed. The number six overall seed in the entire tournament. This is a best of five to win his starting group. 
and Franjek stuns. One of the biggest upsets of the entire tournament beats Sam Bam and four. And now you're like, well, okay, that was cute and all, but he just denied us. He denied us the matchup we all wanted. We wanted to see Sam Bam versus Meepo. He stole that from us. But Franjek is like, you wanted to see Sam Bam versus Meepo. I'll show you how good Meepo is. He swept Meepo. In the round of 16. Very impressive, knocking out two of the top 25. However, next up, he's got a third member of the top 25, Tea Time, coming in with lots of confidence, feeling like this is going to be his tournament to make a statement that he's not only a ladder pro, he can also win in the tournament scene. But Franjek says, uh-uh, not today, not in my tournament. He eliminates Tea Time in four games. He has secured a spot in the final four. Now you might be looking at the bracket. You see the number one seed, the number 12 seed, the number seven seed, three of the top 12 seeds in the final four. You're not surprised to see those names. But this one underdog out for the hearts of the world, trying to shock everybody and take down this tournament. Is this a tournament of destiny for Franjek? He only needs to knock out two more members of the top 25 to do it, and he's already knocked out three. You'll have to tune in to find out.